In the early 90s, the 16-bit console wars were going strong. While in Japan, the Super Nintendo had a commanding lead over the Sega Genesis, in the US, the Genesis was outselling them 2 to 1. This was mostly due to an aggressive ad campaign by Sega, where it made the Genesis look like a cool system, and the Super Nintendo look lame. And who could forget when they started throwing the term blast processing around. So what's blast processing do? And, uh, what if you don't have blast processing? <laughs> The Sega ad campaigns were aimed squarely at teenage boys, and for the most part, it worked. So much so that in 1994, Nintendo altered their marketing with the Play It Loud campaign. You remember that one? A bunch of random anti-establishment stuff mixed with a bleeped butthole surfer song? Yeah, to heck with the establishment. As a way to make the Genesis more appealing, Sega released the Sega CD. The Sega CD was an add-on to the Genesis that allowed for some of the most advanced games at the time. With the additional storage of CDs, games now had higher quality sounds, enhanced graphics, and full motion video. Only the full motion video wasn't quite ready yet, so we had games with postage stamp sized grainy cutscenes. They got better as time went on, but it was off to a rough start. Although having games that felt more like movies was huge. For a little while, anyway. The Sega CD launched with Sewer Shark, a full motion video rail shooter. While the games joked about now, when it was first released, it was amazing. Sewer Shark's a 1992 full motion video shooter from Digital Pictures. The game starts off sometime in the post-apocalyptic future where humans have been forced to live underground. You play a sewer jockey getting ready to go on your first run. Okay, so like I said, the video quality is not the best. Although it is funny to think that nowadays most GIFs have a higher quality. The acting though? That's another story. Hey listen, I hear they're putting you in with ghost today. Now that's my main man. Greatest co-pilot to ever shoot the two. This is Falco. She'll contact you throughout the course of the game. And this glorious homage to all things extreme is Ghost. Welcome to the sewers, punk. The guy you're replacing, he had that same tough guy smirk on his face that you do. He'll be your scenery-chewing co-pilot for this mission. My god, the yelling, the loud guitar riffs. Let's go, rookie! My inner teenager is loving this. Since I don't have a name, Ghost gives us the call sign of Dog Meat. All right, I'm in the ship. Let's get ready to... Oh. oh, nothing says the future like a PowerPoint presentation. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. The sewer jockeys come and they go. What's next? Is he going to yell at me while I fill out a 401k? Now that that's all done, Ghost tells us what our mission is. A million pounds of tube steak. That's all you gotta deliver today, hot shot! So we have to deliver Ron Jeremy? Ghost is communicating with the navigation droid Catfish that has a hillbilly accent for some reason. Oh well, heck, they're dead. Uh, a complete cranial evacuation is a no-brainer, Mr. Ghost! Something down there sucked their brains out! Coordinates! Well, something sucked their brains out? Where is it? Let's go there immediately! Now that the long intro's over, the actual gameplay begins. The game has a few basic parameters. Catfish gives out coordinates to get through the tunnel safely. The critter's at three, six, twelve. This ship pretty much flies itself, but you have to keep an eye out for these junction points and turn when Catfish tells you. If you do them all successfully, you'll get another set of coordinates. If not... So if you see this flashing red arrow, you might as well just start over. While this is going on, you have to shoot these monsters that live in the sewers. Primarily, you'll be shooting these things called radigators. But then there's also mutant bats, scorpions, and other things. You need to shoot a certain amount of monsters while simultaneously not using too much energy. If you fail either of these, when you get to the first checkpoint, Commissioner Stenchler will yell at you. Hey, dog food, or whatever your name is. This is Commissioner Stenchler. Listen, pal, you're a disgrace to the exterminating profession. And Ghost will yell at you. You're missing Radigators the size of your ex! Tap out of it! Even in the future, I have multiple bosses. If you keep the kills up and the energy use down, Stenchler commends you. Hi there. I'm Commissioner Stenchler. You know, that wasn't too bad, kid. You got real, um, real... Potential! Catfish gives us the next set of coordinates. After flying around for a while, Falco contacts us. Oh, 
She gives us directions to get closer to Sector 19. I make it to Stenchler, stuffing himself. Stenchler's in Solar City, which is probably just some beach in Miami. This pleases Ghost, so he upgrades us to the status of Your new call sign is Rat Breath. Turn and burn, Rat Breath. The nice thing is now if you die, you come back here instead of going all the way back to the beginning. The game continues, but it's more of the same. Following the coordinates and shooting radigators. Don't even bother with these stupid bats. You have a better chance of shooting them by accident than by actually aiming at them. If you don't have the right quota for the next checkpoint, this time Stenchler kills you. You know, bad breath. You got no style, no brains, no class, no... Charisma? And the bad news is, I'm gonna kill you. I hadn't played this in years, so I saw this screen a lot. Nothing like being told you suck by a fat guy in front of a bad green screen. Falco contacts us again. I found it! The underground highway to Solar City! It actually exists! Switch to nose cam! Okay, see this crazy looking thing? It's home in the you see this crazy looking thing? They wrote the script before they knew what it was going to look like, so they just gave me a generic description for it. She explains how to get to Solar City, but gets blown up or something. This is a very believable performance. It's one of those. It's coming this way. It's coming right at me. No. No. Catfish finds Falco's ship, but she's not there. Now there's these giant scorpions that show up. They're worth tons of points, but they drain your energy if you miss them. Stenchler's taking control of the maintenance droids, and he's using them to kill the sewer jockeys that have gotten into Sector 19. Stenchler's surfing and... Wait, who's filming him? Ghost takes us back to the hangar so he can put a new Gatling gun on the ship. Why didn't he just have this on there in the beginning? Now he wants us to shoot it, but look at this. He gives us like a two-second window to shoot the thing. Okay, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one... Fire! You didn't fire, did you? What a milksop Millie you turned out to be! Get out of here! I need a pilot! Not a human dribble glass! If you miss the window, you get sent all the way back to the beginning of Rat Breath. Alright, let's try that again. You just gotta start shooting as soon as he says go. This pleases Ghost, and he upgrades us to Exterminator. Like Rat Breath, if you die, you come back to the beginning of this level. Immediately, there's this crazy looking thing, which we have to follow. The maintenance moles are in the tunnels, and if you miss shooting them... <laughs> Stenchler's kidnapped Falco, and intends on frying her if we don't get to Solar City on time. Now in the final level of the game, Ghost upgrades us to... Beach Bum? Turn and burn, Beach Bum! Stenchler's people turn on him. It's like they left out a chunk of the video or something. Girl Friday is cool with him this whole time. And now, out of the blue, she dumps his food on him and starts a mutiny. Remember that brain-sucking thing? Stenchler's got it covered. He has brain-eating fireflies that he threatens everyone with. Get back! Or my Zerks shall have your brain for birth! The Zerks? Oh, the Zerks. They chase him into his office, and he drops them into the sewer. So, this is what mutant fireflies look like? The blue waffle? Kill those things, and then it's off to Solar City. The mob's going after Stenchler. The door was unlocked, and there's no wall on the other side. Falco knocks out Stenchler, and we make it to Solar City. Where did Catfish get a hat and lay from? I think I'm looking too far into this. Hey, I did all the work. Why does he get the girl? So, Stenchler tried to kill everyone. Shouldn't we arrest him or something? Nah, let's just roll him into the ocean. I get you The game was developed for multiple platforms and cost about $4 million, making it one of the most expensive games of the time. Originally, the game was supposed to go with a new VHS game system developed by Hasbro called the Nemo. Hasbro canceled the system, and Digital Pictures took this game and their other one, Night Trap, to see if they could publish it on Nintendo's PlayStation add-on, which was being developed by Sony at the time. Nintendo eventually dropped the CD idea and completely screwed over Sony. Sony owned the rights to the CD system they were developing, so they took their designs and turned it into the Sony PlayStation, which years later completely dethroned Nintendo. 
Tom Zito, the head of Digital Pictures, then took Sewer Shark and Night Trap to Sega to put them on the Sega CD. It cost another $3 million to convert the game to work on the system. Unfortunately, the Sega CD wasn't as powerful as the PlayStation, and they could only have 32 colors on the screen at a time, as opposed to Nintendo's 256. The full motion video looked grainy, and it disappointed Zito, but after having sunk all this money into the games, he had no other choice. All the tunnels in the game were miniatures. They ran a camera on tracks through the tunnels to record the footage that they then digitized and used for the game. The game was later released on the 3DO, and it looked more like it would have if it came out on the Nintendo CD. I loved Sewer Shark when it first came out, and playing it now, 22 years later, I still had way more fun with it than I thought I would. It's a little tough in the beginning, but once you get to Exterminator, it's pretty easy to get to the end. For a movie guy like me, a game like this was outstanding because it was like playing a really bad B-movie, which might not be appealing to a lot of you, but for me it was great. The game is kind of short. If you manage to not die and hit all your quotas, you can beat the game in under an hour. The acting is intentionally campy, but Ghost is just fantastic. I wish they would have made a sequel. I wanted more with this guy. Robert Costanzo was Stenchler, and he was the biggest actor in the cast. He's been in Die Hard 2, Saturday Night Fever, and just two years before this, he was in Total Recall. You ever heard of Recall? Recall? You know where they sell those fake memories. A oh, Recall! 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 Sure, full motion videos had a bad stigma around it, but I still have fond memories of many of the games. If this game came out the way it was originally supposed to look, full motion video games might have fared better in the long run. Even something like Marky Mark make my video. Although I can't see myself going back and playing that one. That's silly, I'd never do that. Make my video. Make my video. Pretend it's a game. Maybe it'll even be fun. Shoot the tubes!